times I'm tried and tested As I travel day by day Oft I meet with pain and sorrow And there's trouble in the way But I have a sweet assurance That my soul the Lord will lead And in Him I find strength for every need Oh, His grace is sufficient And his love is abundant and free, oh so free. And what joy fills my soul just to know, just to know that his grace is sufficient for me. Thank you for joining us this midday moment for a Thursday. This is a song that my papa used to sing many years ago and I think is most appropriate for this day and age that we're living in today. Listen to this second verse. When the tempter brings confusion and I don't know what to do on my knees I turn to Jesus for I know he sees me through the despair is changed to victory every doubt just passed away and in him I find hope for another day oh his grace is sufficient for me, for me, and his love is abundant and free, yes, so free, and what joy fills my soul just to know, just to know that his grace is sufficient for me, and what joy fills my soul just to know, just to know that his grace is sufficient for me. I love that promise from the pen of the Apostle Paul, reminding us that his grace oftentimes is made most apparent in hard times. His presence is felt the most and is the most comforting during the less than perfect days. His grace is sufficient. I pray you'll find that to be true in your life today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for another midday moment for this Thursday. God, I thank you for the sunshine, for the blue skies. Lord, for the for the spring that seems to be in the air. Lord, I know today's kind of cool out, but Lord, it's it's dry, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be able to just to stop for a few minutes, Lord, and on our lunch break or, or whenever time folks are, are stopping to, to watch these 10 or 12 minutes together. I pray God you'd bless them wherever they find their self, whatever concern, whatever their, their worry, whatever their, their burden that they're carrying. I've prayed it for myself oftentimes, and I pray it again. God, that you'll give us the ability and the know-how. God, to know how to roll those worries over to you, to trust you more with every burden of life. Father, you know those needs is on our heart and mind today. God, you know the ones that are uh, near and dear to us, Father, that are sick, families that are grieving today. I do pray a continued blessing on Mike Willis, Lord, as he walks through this time of, of grieving for the loss of his mom. I pray God you'd strengthen them all, Father, during these days. And Father, for families that have um, um, the virus has touched a lot of homes, but Father, not just that virus, but a lot of sickness and a lot of other ways, Lord, that are, that are truly uh, got folks worried. Lord, there's still folks battling cancer and heart disease and all those others seem like all we hear about this day and time is coronavirus. But, Lord, there's a lot of folks that are sick in a lot of ways, and we pray, God, you'd comfort them. Lord, I pray for the Edwards family today, Rebecca and Brandon, Lord, and, and, and I pray, God, you'd bless their little baby girl with continued blessings and strength and, and, and a healing, God, that only you can provide. I pray, God, you'd bless us as a country. Lord, I pray for our leaders every day. But, Father, today my burden goes, is, is my heart's heavy, I think, for pastors as we try to make sense out of this this craziness and and try to be uh, still connected to our people, I pray God for my pastor friends and brothers in arms that you'll guide us and lead us and and give us an understanding on how to best reach your people, but also to still reach those that don't know you with the glorious news of the gospel. So bless these moments together, and I'll give you glory for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've got to. Um, Apologize for scratching my nose. Isn't it funny? 
as soon as they tell you not to scratch your nose, your nose goes to itching. I can't keep my nose off my face, off my hand off my face today. I don't know what that means. Must be having company. Is what it means when your nose is itching. Let me sing a a request for someone today. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is when it seems that everything is so uncertain when it seems that there's more chaos around us than stability it's good to know that it's well with my soul good to see you Miss Janice, Miss Marlene I thank you for tuning in and I pray and hope that the, that our time together will be an encouragement to you I continue to be amazed I think I might have said it yesterday if I'm saying it again uh, just uh, bear with the repeating of a scattered brain pastor um, but I bragged yesterday on how God brought me to Dr. David Jeremiah's book, Living with Confidence in a Chaotic World, because every one of these lessons speaks so loudly, uh, seemingly into the day and age in which we find ourselves today. Uh, I, I was especially blessed by yesterday's lesson where it was um, stay centered, uh, stay centered on Christ. And I love uh, staying connected. I think that was one of them as a, as a church. Uh, we strive to stay connected in these days of separation. Uh, one of the weeks will stay compassionate. One will stay challenged. But anyway, I, well, I don't mean to reteach all of those other ones, but today, week number seven of Dr. David Jeremiah's book is, is, the, is the, the title of the chapter is Stay Confident. And specifically, what, the Dr. Jer what Dr. Jeremiah is speaking towards is God's word staying confident in his word and, and, and in his uh, in his writings in his chapter he makes an interesting observation uh, again I could go back and look this book was published in 2009 so 11 years ago uh, he felt led of the Lord to publish this book no way of knowing that, that some pastor in East Tennessee would be finding encouragement and using it to encourage the hearts of his people during a, a COVID-19 pandemic lockdown shutdown period that we're in but but he says this and, and i'm not giving too many um quotes but i but i want to read a line directly from his book today because it speaks perfectly again he wrote it in 2009 don't forget that but listen to what uh, david jeremiah writes to us today 
When one lives in an unsure world like we do, we need a sure thing. We need a sure word from God. In other words, we need the Bible. There's nothing sure in our world anymore. The economy, peace, retirement, comfort, security, all of it's in limbo. And as Christians, we need the wake-up call to make us realize our hope is not in this world, but in the sure word of God. See what I mean? 11 years ago, that's when the book was published. Who knows when he wrote it? He may have wrote it three years before that, before he ever actually made it to print. So sometime, 10, 11, 12 years ago, God impressed Dr. David Jeremiah to write the words that in this day of an uncertainty, in an unsure world like we live today, we need something stable. We need something uh, that we can place confidence in. And, and he reminds us that that is the living, breathing, inerrant, infallible, never changing word of God. The psalmist writes it this way in Psalm 119, in verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, we, we've all heard verses of, of other psalms, of other pieces of scripture, songwriters. The word of God is referred to the, to the stability, the rock in our land. Uh, we, we love that line that the, that the word of God will stand when mountains crumble into the ocean. <clears throat> but can we all be reminded today that it's it's... Oftentimes, we're all guilty of taking it for granted, but can we be reminded that in a world of uncertainty, that God's word has never changed? What God's word has to say to us as believers, the word of comfort, is still very much alive in our hearts today. What the Bible has speaking to us about the future, about our present, about what it says about sin, what it says about living, what it says about raising family and raising children and being a good husband, being a good wife, all those things those lessons and those teachings that God gives us in his word are as relevant today as when they were penned. So, child of God, wherever you find yourself today, whatever it is you're worried about, whatever worrisome burden is, is near and dear to your heart and you just can't shake it, God knows. He, he knows what keeps you awake at night. He knows that uh, decision that you've got to make. He knows that that. Um, that, that looms large in front of you, looms like a mountain in your path. But whatever it is, child of God, find comfort in this truth. The Word of God will stand. The Word of God will give you all that you desperately need. The psalmist earlier in that Psalm 119, where every verse, except I think maybe every verse, speaks to the idea of, of, the, of the Word of God in one capacity or another. He says, Oh, I, how I love thy law. He says in verse number 97, it's my meditation all the day. So keep in mind that, that God's word is there for you, and it'll change you if you'll make it part of your daily life. Again, wherever you find yourself today, we're praying for you. We hope and pray that these few midday moments are a comfort to you. Thank you for watching. If you're watching them live or if you're watching them after the fact, uh, I hope and pray that it'll be a word of encouragement to you as we focus on, on these scary days, and then for at least for today, the fact that we need to stay confident in God's word. I love you. I'll be praying for you. Reach out to us if we can do anything at all for you. God bless you is our prayer. Have a good day.